You know, fighting games and their modding culture kind of go hand in hand for PC. Most games have either character swap mods, texture mods, some games straight up add other characters into the game. I guess it depends on the engine or something that dictates how extreme a mod can actually be. Now, when it comes to NRS games, Mortal Kombat or Injustice specifically, there isn't much scope to add the more extreme mods. But there are ways to do things like access characters, and they tend to be quite popular. Most notably, the NPCs that appear in single-player modes that are pretty neat and, although totally not intended to be used by a human, still pretty cool to mess around with offline. I've made some videos about NPCs in the past from things like MKX, MK11, so you probably know the drill by now if you've watched this channel for a long time. But one game I've never covered in this way is Mortal Kombat 9, which has the largest pool of NPCs and even some curveballs that are very fun to lab with. This was all accomplished by the MK9 Hook PC mod by popular MK modder Ermaka. And in this video, we'll take a look at not only the tower NPCs you encounter in the Challenge Tower, but more interestingly to me, the secret versions of characters that you can encounter in the arcade mode that are based on older titles, and completely different from their standard playable counterparts. Join me for today's video where we uncover and play as the non-playable characters that exist in one of the greatest Mortal Kombats of all time. So first up, we have the base male. Now, the base male is clearly something that's never really ever to be seen, and I'm not even sure this counts as an NPC, but it's in the file, so I thought I'd showcase it. This is a foundation point for pretty much all of the male characters, and there aren't many moves here. There's Sub-Zero standing one, the neutral jump punch, the jump in punch, jump kick, and neutral jump kick are all there, but there's no low pokes. If I press any of these buttons, nothing will come out. Same thing for sweep, same thing for down two. Nothing exists except for the standing one. Now there are a few extra moves, stance switch and block and all that works, which means you can dash block, a universal mechanic in Mortal Kombat 9, but there's also a throw. This throw will do 1% damage, it's this animation right here. This reverse throw was actually given to Sector, however there is no forward throw at this point in time, again because it is the base starting point for the male characters. There's a few extra things that the base male does have, and this will apply universally to a fair few of the NPCs that you're about to see. I discovered this move right here, down forward two. This kind of looks a lot like Kintaro's air grab, but we're on the ground and obviously it's a bit janky, my neck goes really long. Uh, this is not meant to be given or seen by anyone. But what's even funnier is the on-hit animation. When I saw this for the first time, uh, it was quite funny, I will admit. And on this stage, you can't really see it because the training stage does have a ceiling. Uh, you fly into complete abyss and then just land again. Uh, this is an unblockable command grab. Uh, it doesn't hit mid, the opponent can crouch it, but it is funny just to see this move come out. And it is from what I've been able to discover the only special move that you have when you use any of the NPCs. The final note is that we have an X-ray. This is the very first X-ray that you saw in the announcement trailer. Johnny Cage was using it. This is a mid command grab and it's a flat 30% damage. And as you can see, it's extremely basic. And uh, even the enemy's kind of animation getting hit by it is a little bit janky because again, this was base mail. This is not something that's supposed to be seen by anyone. And that's pretty much it. One thing I did discover is that this X-ray on hit is incredibly plus. And because we have an unblockable grab, this is guaranteed. So funnily enough, base mail and the NPCs do have a little bit of tech if you do X-Ray into the unblockable command grab, they can't escape, and it turns the X-Ray into a guaranteed 38% instead of 30%. But that's it for the base mail. Now, let's get a little bit more interesting. Up next, we enter the generic Fighter A and B. These are NPCs that you encounter in the Challenge Tower. You probably notice a few of their moves when you fight against them, but now we're playing as them, we can take a bit more of an in-depth look. Now straight away, you're probably going to make the attack comparison to Jax, and you'd be correct. The fighting style is the same, the 1-2 is the same, the standing 3 is now essentially Jax's forward 4. He has got a down 3 as well, the low pokes are all existing, the down 1 is incredibly fast, and the incredibly fast down 2 
will also exist. You have got a mixture of Jax's moves. 1-2-1 one, one is this three hit string, which is the beginning of the back one, just given as a three hit, something that you rarely see the AI do. And then you have the back one, two, four, which again is very, very similar to Jax. But they function a bit differently here, and this is what I want to dive into. So first of all, you actually do have some corner combos, mostly because Jax's 1-2 is a notoriously good combo tool in the corner. It would lead to his ground pound, the infinites, all that good stuff. But with the AI and the NPCs, you can actually still do combos in the corner like this. However, you can't really end it all that good because of your distinct lack of special moves. However, we do get some kind of ender, and you may remember this from base mail. The command grab attack still exists, and you can use it as a combo ender. You don't get masses amounts of damage from it, but it's still cool and nice to have as a bit of a extra source. One of the things the NPCs have in common with each other is that the down two will actually launch, which we can use to end combos and still get a decent little chunk of damage. Now, if you remember the x-ray that I just showed you, we can do this. It combos into itself, it's extremely plus, and then we can throw the command grab on top. So who knew the NPCs actually have combo extensions? It's not much, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but I still think it's quite neat. Generic Fighter B is exactly the same as the character that you just saw. The moves are identical, you have all of the same buttons and normals, the launching down 2 still exists, there's not much to show here, apart from the fact that this dude looks like you just beat him up in special forces. And you know what? Hey, I like that. I wonder if this command grab can be broken in some way. Not that it looks broken already, which it definitely does. The director that you have to fight as Johnny Cage is playable here, and I'm going to mention him a little bit differently in that he has the same moves, the launching down two still works. However, he no longer has the special move command grab and the x-ray also doesn't exist. So director has considerably less options than the others do, although the others don't really use those moves. So clearly they were just left over and the AI doesn't actually use them, which is why you probably saw it for the first time in this video. Now there's a reason I'm still showing director because there is one button, one normal, that I haven't showcased yet and I'm saving it for here. Back to. That's not a charged move, it's not unblockable, it's just probably the slowest normal I've ever seen. This on hit will do that. On an airborne opponent this will recapture but you get nothing from it and uh, one of the moves that I assume was just left on the drawing board. The final NPC of this style is going to be the zombie that you have to fight. Now it doesn't have the x-ray, but it does have the command grab, which I don't think I'm ever going to get used to that to be honest. All of the other normals are exactly the same. So the combos that you would do with the NPCs, you know, if by sheer miracle you were ever able to play as them, which you definitely can't, uh, you still have a little bit of options here, but everything else is exactly the same as you've seen before. So. There's no need to go into detail here. And oh yeah, back to. God, it sucks. Okay, I'm going to admit, I was really excited learning this one because this is the generic cyber ninja that you encounter in the challenge tower. And it's kind of a hybrid of Cyrax and Sector. Cyrax in that it looks very similar to the character, although sporting that generic kind of black and white color scheme, which I gotta say, I was always a big fan of. Everything else is Sector in a major stripped down version. There's no x-ray, there's no special moves, no matter what combination you put in, there isn't going to be anything there. Although we do have the generic NPC throw still, everything else is an early version of Sector's buttons and normals. The back one exists, the forward two back one, pretty much most of the things you associate with Sector, although some of the moves are missing. The one two two is actually here, which I found very surprising. The back two one, it actually has a different hit reaction. Notice how far it sends the opponent, and we'll get into that in a minute. Other than that, we are missing certain things. The up three leg lift doesn't work. There is no low back three and all that stuff. So it is an extremely basic stripped down version, but 
There's a few options here and that is what I want to show now. What I found the most enjoyable is the combo pathing in the corner. That back to one that sends them full screen, it launches. And they're in the air for a long time. You can get three of these and look at the damage, 45%. If the AI did that to me, good lord, I'd be not too happy. But clearly it's just a product of the move hitting in a slightly different way. And as you can see, the 1-2-2 two, two, still quite a slow ender, so you've got to be careful with how you end it. And the launching down too still exists, which I like a lot. Unfortunately, we can't get much extra on top of that, purely because we don't have any specials. And if you're playing the Cyber Ninja, the specials is where everything comes from. But hey, if you're a fan of the Cyborgs, this is a nice little Easter egg if you ask me. How about we take a look at a very unusual and clearly unused NPC, the Oni. It has the exact same moves as base mail. I didn't mention it earlier, but when testing this with other players uh, offline, this is an infinite. It's super plus on block and it's really plus on hit. The enemy cannot get out of that. Obviously, it's clearly a move that is just there as a placeholder and frame data, whatever, throw it out of the window, as I'm sure all of these NPCs tend to follow. But there's one thing, and one thing alone, besides this, which is just so funny when Oni has it, the X-Ray, we have it. And what does the Oni do? I'm so short, punches you in the nuts every single time. Seriously, the only reason you'd want to use NPC Oni for a laugh against anyone offline is because you just want to punch him in the nuts and then get that guaranteed command grab. But look, an unused NPC, the Oni's clearly not finished, but I think it's really funny to take a look at. And man, I'd love to see more use of Oni in further games, you know, because Moloch's a cool character. There's a lot of potential there. Just, <laughs> God, hurts to look at. A standalone NPC like the Cyber Ninja is the Tarkatan Soldier. Now, Tarkatan Soldier has a lot of Baraka's moves, but none of the specials. And Baraka, already a low-tier character in this game, Tarkatan Soldier has none of the stuff that is a redeeming quality of Baraka. This is not an overhead. This, you can just get out of it, you can block it low, and you don't have to worry. The low, which launches with Baraka, does not launch with Tarkatan Soldier. Ultimately, this character is clearly there to be beaten up and that's it. There's no special move inputs. If you do down forward two, there's no universal command grab there. There is the X-Ray, which is cool. You know, it's nice that Tarkat and Soldier has something, but you seriously have no other access to anything good. This is just Baraka, and you can't special cancel. That doesn't even launch. It knocks them on the floor. I can only imagine this will work. That's as good as your combo pathing gets as the Tarkatan, and that really is that. The best move Tarkatan has is that broke Baraka down four. Nothing else is there, and this character exists to get destroyed. That's all there is to it. This is where things get really interesting, in my opinion, because with this mod, you can access the super secret hidden fights that you encounter in the towers, the first of which is going to be Classic Jade, influenced heavily by Mortal Kombat 2, which was the first time we saw her really at all. Now, the moves reflect that, and if you haven't already noticed it, these hidden characters have incredible walk speed. You just go a million miles an hour, and because of the instant burst of speed you have, their dash blocking is also extremely good. Now, what is Classic Jade? Classic Jade is basically regular old Jade in terms of, you know, moves and strings that you have. All of this is universal to Jade in general. However, there is only one special move, and that's the Fan Toss. Remember that back then, Jade didn't have her own moveset. She just had extra stuff as a secret character, and this Fan Toss really comes from that, I suppose. And with that comes a few combo options. You don't have loads, a lot of Jade's combo pathing would come down to her launch down back two, which she does not have in this game. That's the simple back two. And it is quite cool seeing all these different combos, although they're quite small. You know, that universal combo that Jade gets anyway against standing opponents, she's got all that. But other than that, she doesn't have a huge amount. The fan toss has quite a lot of recovery on it. And one thing worth mentioning, she doesn't have the air fan. It is just the grounded fan. If she had the instant air fan, then she might have some other options. But as of right now, she doesn't have much. 
In the corner, Jay does have a few options, although the combos are still quite small. Off a lot of launches, you can do standing 3 fan toss, 1-2 fan toss, down 2. That gives you really good damage. Not really having any other specials means that, you know, same side enders are a little bit limited. You could do something like boom, boom, 1-2-2. Two, two. You know, you can do that. You still have her throw as well. That works as normal. But at the same time, your options are rather limited. It is just quite cool doing combos in a different way. This one combo is kind of tight, obviously for not loads of damage. But you can do it. You know, it's all there. But that really is all it is for Classic Jade. As you may have noticed, there's no meter. You can't do X-rays. You can't do, you know, EX moves. You've just got the one special, really good walk speed, and then the basic normals on top of that. One thing worth mentioning, Classic Jade does not have the pre-patch mid-hitting up three. That was one thing I was really excited to see if she had that. But the up three is still a high. You can still duck it. If Classic Jade had the mid up three, it would be a, a taste of the early days, I imagine. Our next secret character is Classic Noob Cybot. This one has the complete kind of silhouette design that we remember from the old games, and he's sporting the MK1 costume. He doesn't have the heavily increased movement speed, although his immediate back walk does have a little bit of a burst of speed to it. This one's pretty standard. And in line with standard, he doesn't really have any specials. This teleport slam is the only move that classic Noob Cybot has. He has got his throws, and you may notice up there the throws do more damage than they normally do, and damage output does tend to be a little bit higher because all he has is teleport. So this kind of reminds me of those classic Noob Cybot fights from the old games, where he doesn't really have any specials whatsoever, but he's just all about regular old standard buttons. Unfortunately, there's not much else to show with this one. Classic Noob is very simple. His teleport can be done in the air, and he has his basic strings, and that's it. His combo pathing would always come down to portals and the up clone in this game, and he doesn't have any of those attacks. This one is fairly standard. One of my favorite of all of the NPCs is Classic Reptile. Now you may be thinking, Classic Reptile? What are you talking about? In MK2, he had all of his moves that he pretty much has in this game anyway. I'm going a step back. Mortal Kombat 1, as is probably given away by the costume that he's wearing. This is where Classic Reptile really comes from. And on top of this hilarious movement speed, which is just so good, he can just walk around and be instantly in and out. Uh, however, Reptile still has got his poor dash blocking ability, so this walking is going to be pretty important, I imagine. His special moves come from the secret AI boss fight of the first Mortal Kombat, Revision 3 to be exact. Spear and Ice Ball. These were the specials that the secret encounter Reptile had in the first Mortal Kombat, and they have given him the slide in this game too. And it's really neat playing this absolute throwback to the 90s where this is where Reptile was first seen. Now you can't special cancel a lot of things. 3-2 Spear doesn't work, 3-2-1 Spear doesn't work. You can do it into Ice Ball though, which is really neat because then you can do 3-2-1 into Slide for a little bit of bonus damage. The damage isn't too bad, all things considered. He's got his throws as well, which is really nice. But what is this version of the character? It is all of Reptile's normals, including that busted down four, and then you have the specials on top. He doesn't have the largest combos in the world, however, the one-two string, I think, is gonna be his more important one. You know, let's say, for whatever reason, you just wanted to play this version of Reptile using the mod. You can do stuff like this, three, two, one, slide. Really good damage for what it is, and then you've got that hilarious movement on top of it. Now, you can't chain these together. You can't do, like, spear into three, two, ice ball, because it does end. You know, they are technically counted as the same stun effect. And that really is what it comes down to for Reptile. He's a cool character, no pun intended. And <laughs> where was the ice? That's the first time I've seen that, no ice. But yeah, MK1 Reptile, he's got some fun combos. The walk speed is great. And he's got that broken, busted Reptile down four. So fun little character. Now I have purposefully saved the best for last. Classic Smoke. Maybe wearing the Mortal Kombat 1 costume, but moveset-wise, this is very, very much Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Why? Because it's basic smoke with all of Smoke's buttons and normals. But guess what? The spear that was taken from Scorpion, a brand new teleport, which I think is really cool, 
and even more in line with Ultimate MK3 as the animation of itself. Besides the fact that it's kind of Ermac's uh, air blast to begin with, and then it becomes Scorpion's teleport, the air throw exists as well. So this is the complete moveset from Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, but oh my lord, does this character actually feel like a complete one. So what happens when you take this moveset and you just give it to the normals and strings of regular smoke? Well, it means you can do combos like this, which is just so cool, you know, even when you miss the jump in, because I'm really good at video games. These attacks work in almost perfect harmony. You know, back to three, that overhead. You can do that into spear and still pick it up into something else. Which, yeah, we don't have those broken death combos that Smoke has because of his resets and the smoke bombs and we haven't got the evade, you know, we don't have any of those moves. We still have access to 2-1 spear, which will become anything else. The launch height is extremely generous. Look at how much damage I just got for 2-1 spear. 48%. And it just feels so natural, so fun. The teleport on its own is really fun to use. As these NPCs do not have their own super meter, you can't enhance, there's no extra versions. However, kind of old days of Demo Scorpion where you can just do this over and over again, it's hilarious. I mean, you can just do spear, you can do neutral jump, and then just do this a couple of times, and then just finish it. You know, it's really fun being able to get all of this. The at the air standing too. If I set the AI to movement mode jump, you know, you can do all of these old anti-airs that smoke gets, but you can just turn it into spear instead. Jump in air throw. There you go. Legit B and B. This version of smoke, even though it's NPC and it's never been designed to be played by a human, you could use this version of smoke against someone and he would still be, I think, a fairly decent character because all of his moves exist, all of his buttons exist, and the specials that he gets given, even though it's a throwback to Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, it works in perfect harmony. I mean, I guess that just comes down to Smoke as a character that Scorpion's moves have always worked well with his design. This is that taken to the next level. And if I had the chance to use this character as a genuine unlock, I would have really enjoyed it. And I think all of the Smoke mains out there, or even Scorpion mains, would have just as much fun as I have, if not more. This character is absolutely fantastic to play as. And that just about wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want to throw me some extra support, chuck me a subscription on Patreon. Just follow the channel, share it with your friends if they like Mortal Kombat. Every little helps when it comes to YouTube and being able to make more of the videos that hopefully you enjoy so much. I've got plenty more content where that came from. Big plans in the works and I'm excited for the next competitive history which will be out very soon. Thank you once more for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Take care.